Welcome friends to a discussion on diffusion of innovations and as we know diffusion of innovations is how, why and at what rate new ideas and technologies spread in a society and among people and uh, this is a concept which has been popularized by uh, uh, American uh, Communication Studies Professor uh, Everett Rogers who, who started working on this from 1962 on, on, a, on a book of the same name and there have been five editions of the book and this uh, study started in, in, in the 19th century by, by French sociologist Gabriel Tarde and there have been a number of studies beginning in rural sociology about adoption of, of uh, hybrid cons for example in Iowa and then it has uh, uh, diversified into many fields including social network analysis and into ed educational technology as well. So th there are fascinating ways of looking at innovations and how they spread among societies. So let's uh, begin this discussion. As I said, this has been popularized by Everett Rogers and this is Everett Rogers and this is his book in, in its fifth edition. And today we are going to talk about, uh, uh, we are going to uh, take a lot from this book in, in our discussion today. So let's define diffusion first. So diffusion is the process in which an innovation is communicated through certain channels over time among members of a social system. So those channels are important, that, that spread of time is important and the members of the social system is important. And one of the ways in which it, it spreads is, uh, is, is a concept known as imitative behavior. So at the level of small groups and within communi uh, communities, when we are talking of micro level processes, there is some uh, uh, kind of an imitative behavior. And those micro level processes uh, uh, bring up to a mic macro level social change as well. So we are going to look at both the micro and the macro aspects of uh, diffusion of innovations. And uh, innovations is, is defined as anything that potential uh, adopters perceive to be new or which uh, it could be new ideas, it could be new beliefs, it could be uh, tacit knowledge, it could be explicit knowledge, it could be processes, even protocols, tools, technologies, the way we live our lives or even belief systems. So it, it encompasses a lot of uh, things, a lot of new ideas. And in today's discussion, we'll also be talking about uh, Indian uh, uh, scientist Raghunath Mashelkar's assured paradigm on, on uh, what, what is good innovation and what is not good innovation or, or what are the factors which determine whether an innovation will be adopted or not adopted. And a key to understanding innovation is that existing knowledge is implemented in new contexts and that opens up new possibilities. So your existing knowledge is, is, an, is an indicator of, of uh, whether you'll be adopting innovations or not. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll be talking details about, about uh, how, how the innovation process uh, goes ahead. So uh, diffusion of innovation begins with a few individuals, the innovators, people who take up the new idea. And then it is followed by uh, early adopters and then the curve begins to climb as more and more people adopt the new idea. So we'll be talking of, 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 of concepts like, like a critical mass of, of uh, how and why these change agents matter and uh, why these innovators are, are so very important at, at kick-starting the uh, uh, innovation process. But it's very important to understand that uh, uh, to begin with only a few individuals will take up the new idea. And we'll also talk about what are the characteristics of, of those innovators, people who, who are always uh, willing to take up the new idea. And then we have the early adopters and the late adopters and the laggards and, and uh, we'll see uh, details about that. So this is uh, the, uh, the popular diagram, popularly known as the S-curve. And this is, how, uh, this is what uh, uh, the diffusion of innovation is. So uh, over time, we have a small number of early adopters who, who are always willing to try out new things. And then we are the innovators right there and then we have the early adopters here and then we have the later adopters and then it just uh, uh, achieves uh, the, the, the uh, total uh, diffusion that it could achieve. So we have this popular S curve of, uh, of uh, diffusion of innovations and this is always how it begins over time and this is the cumulative number of people. On, on the Y axis we have cumulative number of people who have been adopting the innovation and on the X axis we have the time. So over time, as it starts, we just have very few people uh, uh, who are the innovators who take up the new idea. And then we, we uh, will we'll find out that is, there is also a percentage of people who take up uh, uh, the new idea. And then, you know, who, uh, what percentage are early adopters and all. We'll, we'll just see as we carry on with our presentation uh, today. 
so as i said the first 2.5 percent of the adopters are the innovators so so for example if there are 200 ad adopters and five the first five are the innovators people who are always willing to try out new ideas the next 13.5 percent are early adopters so that would include the opinion leaders also so innovators are kind of the change agents and then we have the early adopters and uh, it's very important to involve opinion leaders there because people uh, depend on interpersonal challenge uh, channels to adopt or not to adopt uh, these innovations and then we have an early majority uh, about 34 percent and then we have the late majority 34 percent and finally the laggard who, who are the last to adopt uh, any kind of an innovation so if i have to put that in uh, uh, this this graphical format and this is the uh, famous bell curve we get so the first 2.5 percent are the innovators and then we have the early adopters which is uh, 13.5 percent then the early majority and the late majority and uh, this is the uh, laggard so this is this is uh, this is almost this almost looks like that uh, uh, normal curve uh, we, we, we are so uh, used to seeing so this provides us an idea about 16% uh, uh, of the people who are always uh, first to start uh, kick start uh, the process and the s curve that we saw is is uh, reflective of this and then we have the early majority and the late majority and the laggards at end So the early uh, innovators or the uh, uh, change agents, they are regarded as venturesome. So they are always willing, they are, they are adventurous in, 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 uh, by, by, by mindset, always willing to try out new ideas, new systems, new technologies, new belief system, new ways of uh, doing certain things. Uh, the early adopters are the people who have some kind of respect in society and they are going to look at the pros and cons and look at the relative advantages and will find out uh, what are the factors which uh, influence the diffusion process but the early adopters are the ones who have uh, some respect in the community and and uh, uh, they are the ones who will act as opinion leaders also in, in uh, the uh, uh, adoption of, of the new technology or the idea and then we have the early majority people who uh, deliberately uh, uh, do those things so they'll be you know uh, doing a lot more thinking before adopting uh, in any kind of thing and then we have the late majority who are the skeptical and the laggards who are uh, regarded as, as uh, people who are more traditional in, in, in their uh, outlook and they would not adopt certain uh, any, any new idea or technology unless they have no other choice so we have all these different types and uh, i'm just putting them in single words but there's a lot more about you know who the innovators are and what their personality types are and who the early adopters and who the early majority or the late majority and the laggards are but important to understand that there are at least five different types of people in the in this innovation process and uh, this is a very very important uh, idea uh, from Everett Rogers and uh, we, we, we must put some time here about uh, discussing the stages of the diffusion process. So the diffusion process starts off with the knowledge or awareness of that new technology, new idea, new belief system or new ways of doing things and that is provided by the mass media generally. So the first process in the uh, diffusion process is knowledge or people get aware of that. And then comes the persuasion process and this is where probably the interpersonal channels and the, 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 the local impacts is, is more important. Why? Because uh, after the awareness, you must have more reasons to decide whether or not to adopt the innovation. And that is where uh, you need something more than ju just knowledge. So, so lots of uh, pros and cons about, about whether the innovation is as good as, as the earlier one or whether there are any advantages of this or what are the incentives for all that. So that, that's the second stage. And the third stage where one finally decides whether to try out or not. So again, you know, that is a stage which will follow the persuasion. So many of us might find this very similar to the advertisement models of, of uh, people get aware and then, uh, then they have interest and then they have the desire and action and all that. So this is very similar to some of those advertising models. So then we make a decision on whether to uh, adopt the innovation or not. And again, that also has, has a lot to do with both the mass media channels and our interpersonal contacts and the decision is based on a lot of information about what are the advantages of the innovation do i how much of effort i have to put into uh, uh, adopt the innovation and all, all such things 
and then one tries out the uh, innovation so that in implementation stage is not the final stage that is the stage at, at which we are trying it out uh, ourselves so that trialability is very important and and that trying out will determine and the results of that trying out will determine that whether it will be finally adopted or not and that is the process which is known as the confirmation so just to repeat the diffusion process involves uh, first the, uh, is knowledge where we have awareness about, about the innovation then uh, uh, there is a, a more knowledge or, or more information about that which uh, persuades us to adopt uh, the uh, innovation process as, as we'll see that you know that there's a campaign which is required for people to adopt so it, it does not uh, occur naturally and then you decide to adopt the uh, innovation innovative idea or, or method or technique or strategy uh, finally you try it out and then you confirm it so every innovation has to go through these five processes now we are going to talk about what are the factors which uh, uh, determine whether a new idea will be adopted or not and Everett Rogers describes these uh, five factors so the first factor which will de determine whether I'll be adopting the new technology or not or will be adopting the new idea or not is the relative idea how much better it is from the old idea so if it is just uh, incrementally better then probably I might not be interested in that but if it is a, a lot better then we will be uh, thinking of adopting this new idea and it, it, there are many factors in relative advantage one of them of course and always is the is the affordable factor whether I'm able to save money through the innovation and we might have other other advantages also it could be relative use it, it, it could be convenience it could also you know make me feel good and so so there are a lot of whether it's a part of social fad and all those kind of things so the relative advantage of the new idea is what determines whether the the, the new idea or technology will be adopted or not and the second very important thing about the uh, adoption of the uh, new idea or technology or adoption of the innovation is compatibility and this means the degree to which the new idea is similar to existing practices. So if the innovation is not consistent with the existing uh, experience, if it is very different from what I've been doing, uh, it's, it's, it's remarkably different. So, so, so that, that, that ease of use will be lost there. So if, if there is an innovation which is, which is incompatible to the value systems or the kind of things that I've been using, then probably I will, I will have a greater resistance to adopting that. So the degree to which it is similar, so, so we have to start off with, with uh, uh, our, our similar ideas and with, with our comfort with the kind of things we've been using and we have to build upon that. So compatibility is a very important factor when it comes to uh, uh, adopting uh, new ideas and uh, new technologies. Uh, very important to understand whether the new idea or, 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 or practices is, uh, is simple or complex because if it involves a lot of difficulty in adopting the new technology or new idea then probably we are going to not expend that much of energy and that is one area where a lot of good innovations do not diffuse properly because people regard uh, people find that to be extremely complicated so it, it, it uh, the, the end user has to be kept in mind if the end user is, is not kept in mind when we are designing these new technologies new ideas and new strategies then uh, the, the innovation will not be very successful and as we discussed, the, the process of adoption involves a, 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 a stage where we are trying out the innovative idea and we are finding out whether it works or not. So if, it, if uh, the innovative idea is not, uh, it cannot be adopted on an experimental basis and that is why we have all these uh, 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 trial packs and, and you know 30 days of, of free trial and those kind of things because that provides us with an option of trying it out for ourselves and seeing whether uh, what, what our experience is, whether we, we are satisfied and whether uh, it's, it's useful, whether it is compatible, whether it is not complex and, and uh, what are the relative advantages when I use it. So it's, it's not on, on what the change agent wants to tell me, but it's on how I find it. So that is why trialability is a very important indicator of whether the innovative idea will be adopted or not. And finally, the changes must be visible, the changes must be apparent, the uh, relative advantage must be apparent. So innovations whose, whose positive, eff positive effects are not visible, they might not be adopted. So observability is a very important factor. 
that whatever changes are, are said to be uh, there or whatever advantages are, are said to accrue to this, this kind of a method, those advantages must be visible to us. If th those advantages are not visible or apparent, then the uh, 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 adoption will be uh, uh, more, more uh, 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 delayed. So this is uh, from uh, uh, Everett Rogers' book and these are the five stages that I just spoke of, the relative advantage, whether uh, the new uh, uh, innovation, it, it, uh, it is, it is uh, advantages from the one we've been using, how compatible it is to the technology we've been using so far, whether uh, it, it's complex or simple, whether I'm able to do trial on them or uh, and you know whether I can see the uh, 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 impact, the positive impact or the relative advantage uh, uh, more, more uh, empirically or they are visible, the, the uh, advantages are visible. And then the second important thing which determines the innovation decision is the type of innovative decision. Whether it is optional or whether somebody is doing it just on his or her own and everybody is not mandated to adopt that. So that, that's one decision which will uh, uh, decide whether the innovation will be adopted fast or it will not be adopted fast. Whether people decide collective, uh, collectively, maybe at the village level, maybe at the municipal level, maybe at the state level, district level or whatever level, where people decide collectively on adopting the new innovation or adopting the new uh, technology or the new idea. Or whether some authority is involved there where people are, uh, are mandating us to adopt the innovation. So uh, this type of uh, innovation decision is, uh, is also an important factor which determines at what rate the uh, uh, innovation will be adopted by individuals and by, by society at large. Uh, the communication channels are extremely important as we've seen that it could be mass media, it could be interpersonal cha channels and there are various stages where the mass media is important and uh, there are other stages at which uh, interpersonal contacts are important. So th they are also another very important indicator for the adoption of uh, uh, innovations and then the nature of the social system so whether it is it is it is networked whether uh, there is more interconnectedness am am among people or, or uh, what are the norms of the system and all so those are also a very important indicator of uh, whether the innovation will be adopted or not and finally the extent of change agents promotion efforts so what are the kind of campaign and and how uh, how, how efficiently and how effectively you do those campaigns. So that is also a very important indicator in the, in the uh, uh, rate of adoption of innovations. So just to repeat, the factors that determine individual choice includes peer pressure. And we'll talk about uh, this uh, critical mass. Where if, if a lot of uh, people have already adopted it, then there's pressure on you to uh, adopt that. Or if uh, many people in, in, in your close uh, uh, proximity they are using something then you are you are uh, there's there's pressure on you to adopt those innovations there could be social norms so, so society kind of uh, uh, appreciates adoption of these uh, uh, new techno technologies uh, uh, more often uh, what are the perceived benefits as we, we already spoke and what are the availability of resources and communication uh, efforts also so how much of uh, uh, communication campaigns are there to uh, kind of uh, 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 help people adopt these innovations So here I talk about the incentives and that again is a very important indicator which uh, suggests how, how quickly the innovation will be adopted or what uh, uh, how, how it can be catalyzed into uh, adoption. So whether the incentives are, are for the adopter or for the diffuser, whether the incentives are, are for the individuals or, or for the community as a whole. So, so there are places where if, if everybody is not doing it then the entire community uh, is impacted. So in vaccines for example so whether the incentives are positive whether you are rewarded for, for for adopting the innovations or whether it is a negative uh, whether 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 you are, are punished for for not adopting certain things and that could be uh, symbolic so uh, whether the incentives are monetary or whether they are non-monetary whether the incentives are immediate that i can see the advantages immediately or whether the incentives are delayed so these are the factors which determine how quickly an innovation will be adopted uh, we've been talking about uh, macro perspectives also and that is where we talk about social change. So, so this is about uh, innovation uh, uh, going through the society and, and the means by which uh, people adopt these uh, changes. So here we are more uh, concerned about whether social change is happening or not. And at the micro perspective as we'll see this is more at a personal level, more at the individual level. 
so in in the micro perspective we are looking at the individuals we are, we are looking at the uh, predictors of of positive uh, adoption so what are the interpersonal relations and and what are the information exposures and how are the network positions related to adoption decisions so that again is is a, is a social network perspective so so if if you, whether whether you are you are central to the network or or whether you are you are peripheral to the network whether those uh, placements are are the ones which uh, determine whether uh, you will be adopting an innovation or you will not be adopting so there is the micro perspective and there is the macro perspective as i suggested and now we are going to talk about a very very important uh, 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 scale for innovation and this has been suggested by india india's foremost uh, 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 scientist uh, professor raghunath mashelkar and very different from uh, uh, everett rogers's uh, factors of innovation he talks about what is known as the assured scheme whether the innovation is affordable for everybody whether it is affordable for people to adopt so we are very quick at adopting uh, uh, innovations if it, if it is economical for us whether it it is scalable whether it can be adopted at a larger scale so a lot of things they are very good maybe at at, at a smaller scale so if it is not scalable then that innovation will not uh, be sustained and sustainability generally in in the cases of of environmental sustainability uh, in case in terms of social sustainability and in terms of economic sustainability so if the innovation is not sustainable on these three factors then it will not be adopted and universality is about uh, the ease of use basically and whether uh, uh, the the changes have have uh, uh, widespread use among among consumers so when we are talking about universal we are putting the consumer or the or the people who are adopting it at the center and uh, rapid means if uh, all these things have to be done rapidly i mean it, uh, because technology changes rapidly people's uh, choices and uh, and requirements change rapidly so it it, it has to be done and of course excellence is uh, very important because in 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 a, in a global atmosphere if uh, the innovation is uh, not uh, technologically and and uh, scientifically and otherwise uh, excellent or or uh, or or of a very high order then it will not be uh, able to sustain itself of course all the other things are are related to that and it must be uh, different or, or it must have its own distinctiveness so i can't get into the details of all these things but affordability scalability sustainability the ease of use uh, the 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 rapidity at which it is uh, brought to the end consumer and and uh, the fact that it is it is very useful and also it it has its own distinct advantages these are the factors which uh, determine whether an innovation will be successful or not so uh, there are other factors also which are uh, like like bandwagon effect so often you know these two things happen that probably diffusion is done but implementation is not uh, that good so when when the uh, 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 incentive is just to adopt certain things and uh, there is there is no incentive to use it then probably uh, the diffusion is there but uh, uh, the usage or implementation is not there so we have to be aware of uh, these kind of things so there are many ideas which are uh, diffused properly but not uh, uh, used in the, in the longer term so that's what uh, sustainability was about and there are a lot of good innovations a lot of good for example uh, hiv vaccine where where this is very advantages but but for very many reasons they do not diffuse so we saw a situation where a lot of uh, a uh, diffusion happens where people do not end up using it in, uh, ultimately and then there are diff, uh, innovations which are which are fab, uh, fabulous e excellent and, and and very useful but people don't end up using it uh so uh, there is uh, this very important model again this is suggested by by everett rogers himself so uh, there are these two factors uh, which uh, help in the adoption of uh, new ideas or new technologies and these are uh, uh, firstly it's due to mass media and then it's due to interpersonal communication so as we can see that initially it's the mass media which is which is very important but beyond the stage the uh, impact of the mass media starts going down and the impact of uh, personal communication is very very important so if we are just looking at uh, uh, mass media campaigns then probably they are not enough so we have to look at those uh, interpersonal uh, campaigns using uh, opinion leaders using influencers using change agents and all that so bass's model uh, talks about uh, both these uh, factors as being very important factors for adoption of innovation 
and we have uh, uh, an idea of opinion leaders from our two step flow theory from personal uh, influence theories and all where they are a class of people who are responsible for diffusing those information from the mass media to their uh, uh, interpersonal channels and that's where uh, the role of opinion leaders is very important and as as change agents we must be very uh, clear about who these opinion leaders are what are their characteristics and how we can involve them in uh, these uh, diffusion processes and as we already know that these opinion leaders are are different in different contexts and they are they do not have any uh, kind of a formal position but that is a position which is given to them by the members of the society uh this is where this idea of critical mass is important and and if we do not reach this critical mass then we will not be reaching the innovation so there are a lot of innovations which start off quite well uh, for example pagers uh, we, we might be knowing that but they do not end up reaching a critical mass and lot of social media channels also and we we can talk about many many channels like we chat in india for example they do not they uh, and google one also that they never reach this critical mass and that's why they cannot take up Uh, take off so it's important using all those interpersonal channels and through media channels to reach this critical mass and that is where uh, in, in, in innovation can be uh, more easily diffused so uh, reaching this critical mass is vital for any uh, innovation to be sustained and also the difference between tacit and codified knowledge so there's a lot of knowledge which is tacit which is not codified which is inherent so this understanding of of different types of knowledge systems is important to uh, help us uh, take this uh, diffusion process further so what are the change agent roles and what are the uh, things that the change agent agents must do so these are the seven roles that everett rogers talks about so first of all he has to develop a need for change so he or she whenever he is uh, talking about diffusing a new technology or a new idea or a new process or a new strategy he has to first of all uh develop a need for change in, in the community and then establish an information exchange relationship because if an information exchange relationship is not formed and if there is no communication then there will be no diffusion and it's important to diagnose the problems from the user's perspective and we've been discussing that in, in, in different uh, contexts so that uh, problem has to be diagnosed by the change agents to see whether it can uh, whether anything can be done from uh, the perspective of the change agent and then that creating that intent to change and that creation of intent is as we, as we have seen it's a long process where people have to be uh, 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 you know told about the relative advantages and and the uh, simplicity and all those things of the innovation and then finally that intent to change must be translated into action and then it has to be ensured that people Uh, keep continuing with the innovation and don't, don't discontinue it and then uh, uh, kind of lead to a self renewing behavior where people do that on their own so as we've seen just in in the previous slide once that uh, uh, a critical mass is reached then the diffusion take, uh, is self perpetuates then uh, we don't have to make an effort so it's important to understand that we have to reach this uh, stage where people uh, do that on their own people adopt the innovation on their own and finally uh, the use of new media is is uh, one area where we can use uh, for 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 adoption of uh, uh, innovative ideas because there there could be interactive pages where people can uh, uh, see for themselves how these changes are happening and and what are the effects and uh, so uh, those simulations can be adopted so uh, the adoption of internet itself is a uh, is a subject of a lot of uh, studies on uh, diffusion of innovations thank you very much for your uh, patience